thank you. Um, as you guys can see, I am recording. Um, I have to do this presentation for uh, the finishing of my master's. Um, I'll be done in a couple of weeks, so thank you for letting me teach your class. Um, so we're going to go over enteral medication administration. And the first thing that we're going to go over are the five or six rights. Um, can anybody tell me, name one of the rights? Patient. Patient, okay. Drug. going to be their armband. You want to verify with the armband. And then with most of the places, you're going to be scanning the armband. But you just want to verify that it is the correct patient. Um, and then um, the right drugs. You're going to check the drug three times before you get it. The first time you're going to check it is in the medication room. Um, and you're going to be uh, just making sure that it verifies and it's the same drug. And then you're going to be uh, aware of look-alike, sound-alike drugs. Um, one look-alike, sound-alike would be Adderall and Indorol. Um, Adderall would be for a CNS stimulant and Indorol is a beta blocker. Or you have Celebrex and Seroprex. And a third example would be Clonazepam and Clonidine. The other name for Clonazepam is Clonidine. So they're very similar and you just want to make sure most of the MARs will say look like sound like on the MAR to um, give you a, a heads up. And then there are a list of medications, and I know at Mercy uh, we have it in the, um, the med room that will alert you of the different medications. And every year <coughs> we keep adding more and more medications to the look like sound alike. And then um, you're going to check the drug again before opening the package, and then you're going to check it the third time before you actually give it to the patient. So there's three checks. And then for the right dose. You're gonna verify that the dose is appropriate for the patient. And then that's especially when you're redoing your math problems. Um, you wanna be very careful of the decimal placement. Um, that's why we don't do 2.0 milligrams. We'll just do a two versus a 0 0.2 milligrams. If you mess that up, you could really um, cause the patient some harm. So you always want to recheck your math. And another good thing for the math calculations, even though we have the computer systems, um, I give chemotherapy, and we have to verify that with two special RNs, and the medication was wrong. It was sent up from pharmacy incorrect. So you always <coughs> have to be leery of what you're giving and the amount that you're giving. And then there's special uh, patient variables. Um, if you're giving a antihypertensive, you always have to check your blood pressure beforehand. Uh, if you're giving insulin, you need to know what their blood sugars are before you get that insulin. And anytime you're giving anything uh, digitalis, you're gonna check the heart rate. Usually the apical is what they recommend for a full minute before you give any type of um, medication for that, so. What kind of drug was that for the apical? Digitalis. The other name would be digoxin. So you want to check the heart rate. For their heart. So if their heart rate is too low, you don't want to give that medication. So just like if their blood pressure is low, that's why you want to check before you give any antihypertensive. Okay, and then we have the right route. All medications have to have a route. If you have an order that does not have a route, you always have to call the physician and verify. Don't assume the route. And then um, liquid med medications. Uh, sometimes they will come up into a syringe from pharmacy. You just have to verify that you're given it orally and not IV. Or um, 
a medication, it could be given IM or IV, or it could be an epidural route or an IV route. So you always have to check the route of the medication. And then you have to be mindful of the particulars of each drug. Can the drug be crushed? Can it not be crushed? Um, if it's IM, can you definitely give that IM, or is it sub -Q? And then the right time. The right time, you have a half hour before and a half hour to give the medication. So if the dose is due at nine o'clock, you have 8.30 to 9.30 to give the medication. Um, as you progress through the nursing program and start doing more and more things on your own, um, you might be with the nurses to do, give the medication. And like at Mercy, our policy is we have an hour before to an hour after. So we have until eight o'clock, until 10 o'clock. You guys do not. So just be leery, you have a half hour before and a half hour after the time of the medication. And then PRN medications as needed. So you wanna give those as close to the time frame as possible. So if you have a patient that is taking um, pain medications and it's every four hours, you gave the dose at seven o'clock, the next dose is due at 11 o'clock. Do not give it at 10.30, you know, do not give it at, you have to give it as close to the time frame as possible. Within a few minutes, 10 minutes is good, but we don't try to give anything earlier than that. Um, especially with pain medications, the patients kind of start setting their watches to it. And if you start going by a half hour, then they're gonna start getting their medications more frequently than what is. So you have to give it as close to the time frame as possible. And then nursing judgment, um, there's gonna be times where you're not gonna give the medication on time. Um, uh, especially at Mercy, they can order their meal trays at any time that they want. You're not gonna give insulin until that meal tray is there. So um, if the patient is going for a procedure and they can't have anything to eat or drink, you're also gonna hold the medication before that procedure. Um, and IVs go out, you're not gonna be able to give an IV medication. So, um, so there are times where um, medication can be late. And then, of course, the right documentation. Um, you're always going to document the medication that you gave, the dose that you gave, the time that you gave, the route, and then um, the site. Um, most of the electronic medications will have that all on there. The only thing you would have to add um, is the site. So if it was sub-Q or IM, where did you give it? You gave it in your arm, the leg, um, so you have to document that. Um, but some of the facilities, like nursing homes, they don't have the medication um, electronically, so you're gonna have to probably handwrite it. So, um, but you always have to, and then if you don't give a medication or the medication is late, you always have to document why um, something was not given. Um, the patient couldn't eat or drink, the patient refused, um, so you always have to document that. Okay, and then um, these are just, um, for any type of medication, you always want to adhere to standard precautions. Um, so you're going to wash your hands. Um, you're going to put on gloves if there's potential uh, for exposure to a medication. Um, you always want to check the expiration dates. Um, when we go into the clinical settings with the teacher, they will ask you, you know, when is the expiration date of the medication? And then you also want to verify that the medications that you are giving can be given together. Uh, some medications can't be given with other medications, they will bind to it. Um, so you would have to check to make sure that they can do that. And for the most part, um, they'll be a little bit separated, but you have to know that. Um, and then you always have to review the patient's allergies before you give any type of medication. And then for oral medications, you always want to um, have the patient drink a full glass of water or any 